and entered into an house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a sour fishing by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it's not meet to take the children's bread and cast it into the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, but the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she is, was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word this morning. Amen. Amen. Now, Jesus had been toiling and preaching and healing the sick and just doing a lot of great things. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to kind of start off a little slow this morning. Uh, I've been in the prayer line on the receiving end. And I know what it's like to get a touch, a move of God on the receiving end. But I also know what it's like to be in the prayer line on the end where you're praying for the sick. And I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. When the Spirit of God begins to move, and you can feel the anointing to pray for the sick right while the Spirit's moving. You feel very, very strengthened. Right. But when the Spirit stops moving, and after you've really, really been anointed praying for the sick, there have been times that I had to muster up the strength just to get out of the building. Yeah. In the same way as preaching, when you're really anointed to preach, there's times that I've got through preaching, especially after working the altar service with it, that I felt weak and depleted. Right. And so when I read this passage of Scripture, I understood what Jesus felt like. Now, I've been, I've been anointed to pray for the sick, and I've seen some healed. But can't you imagine the anointed, Brother Raymond, when somebody brings somebody by and they're dead? Right. Amen. And then you reach and anoint them. Amen. Hallelujah. Now Jesus was already feeling depleted. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. And then here comes a woman that has a child back home. He, he, he not even not even in the presence of that child. Amen. And then and then, well, I feel God moving here today. Hallelujah. Not even in the presence of it, but then she comes and wants him to heal that child. And then he goes on, and I'm not going to preach about that this morning uh, for no length, but uh, uh, about her being not uh, uh, of the people of Israel and and, and uh, so on and so forth. And, 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 and she said, well, it may not be the uh, uh, children's bread, but just give me what you give the dogs. Amen. And for that kind of faith, he said that devil has gone out of her. Now you talk about the power of God. Well, it's God in the flesh. But we can have the same spirit today because the Bible said that the things that Jesus did, greater than these shall you do because I go back to the Father. That's because we got the third person of the Godhead. Amen. Well, you opened up the book for it this morning. Amen. I'm telling you, if we're not getting greater done, then we're not full. And I didn't say you weren't full. I said that we're not full if we're not getting the greater done. Hallelujah. Because Jesus was getting the work done. Amen. The scripture said he could not be hid. He couldn't even find a place to rest a little while without somebody finding out where he was and coming and needing the move of God in their life. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, a lot of people look at the Old Testament and they can't see Jesus there. But I'm telling you, 
He couldn't be hid even in the Old Testament. Let me preach a few minutes. Hallelujah. Right in the book of Genesis, right at the very start, uh, 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 we find him being the seed of the woman that was prophesied then. Hallelujah. We find him in Abel's sacrifice. And that's just to mention a couple. Amen. Jesus told the Jews about Abraham. Amen. They professed to be the children of Abraham, and they were by lineage. Amen. But Jesus said, Abraham saw his day and was glad. Hallelujah. You can't hide Jesus. He's in the book. Hallelujah. And when we get the book in us, amen, then they'll not be, we'll not be able to hide him either. If we can go to work or you can go to school or you can go to the shopping mall and you can hide him, amen, then we don't have him. We're not as full of God as we profess to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Help us, God. Amen. Christ will never be hid. Amen. Hallelujah. He'll never be hid. From his own right and glory, creation belongs to him. Yes. Well, I'd like to preach a little bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, you know, talking about working up the worship here a few minutes ago, and I, I mentioned practicing their songs and studying their message. And uh, I mentioned in Bible class out here this morning, there was a time, brothers, whenever the older folk couldn't read enough right. to study too much. Right. That's right. And they didn't know enough songs to practice too much. Right. Amen. And by the time they got up early before daylight and, and the mamas and the daughters started preparing the work in the house and the dads and the sons went to the barn and took care of all the things they had to do out there. Now, I remember a lot of that in my day. Amen. But I don't remember having to walk to school and the men having to walk to work, that was a little bit before my time. Amen. And I don't remember all that. They didn't have time, uh, folks, to practice much. Amen. But I'm telling you, whenever they'd come to the house of God and get on an old guitar and then about half out of tune, amen, and get to strumming, amen, when you see me coming, I've got him on my mind. When you see me coming, I've got him on my mind. Oh, when you see me coming, I've got him on my mind. Cause I've got Jesus on my mind. Are you helping me this morning? He couldn't be hid. Amen. He was all in their life. He was their life. And Christ could not be hid. Amen. When you see me coming, I've got him on my mind. Well, what's going to happen? I don't know. This ain't in the note, but I'm beginning to feel this. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. When you see me coming, well, when you hear me singing, and when you hear me preaching, when you see me shouting, that's all that was on their mind was the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And God moved. Oh, glory. I remember one time, and I've told this before, we didn't go to the doctor much. And usually if somebody got sick, I was the first one to carry whatever is on us, you know. I got the mumps at school, and I carried the mumps in on the whole bunch. I got chicken pox at school, and I carried chicken pox in on the whole bunch. And sometimes I got the whooping cough, and, and, and I was the only one who went to the doctor for the whooping cough. When they found out that's what it was, there wasn't much you could do, but just let it run its course, and that's what we done. Amen. But I remember one time Dad was mowing, and he didn't have much to mow with, but trying to mow the grass, and he hit a piece of wire, and hit my brother Ronnie with it. You heard me tell, some of you heard me tell this. If the wire had hit him straight, it went into his heart and killed him. Amen. Or maybe hit something vital there and killed him, or an artery or something. But it hit him flat, just sunk into him. And they thought, you know, uh, uh, perhaps it could have broke a rib or something. Put him in the hot, uh, car real quick, Dad did. 
and rushed him to the uh, uh, hospital to have him checked out. And and uh, mom began to pray. Amen. But before dad ever got him back to the house, mom knew that he was going to be all right because the Lord had done spoke to her and told her. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'm sure there's some of you here today that have experienced the same thing. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. And when we teach about Pentecost, amen, and we go back in and bring that out in our Sunday school class about having the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen, then we've got Christ in our life with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. Amen. Then he cannot be hid if he's there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm not going to be a preacher. No, I'm just going to tell you I'm not. I've just got to do what the Lord laid on my heart here today. Amen. Scripture said he couldn't be here. And I remember, I remember when the Lord used me a little more with prophecy than what he's doing today. I remember those days. Amen. Can you help me? I, I didn't preach as much then as I do now. Amen. But I'm telling you, just because we got, you know, do more of one, that don't mean we ought to lose the other. That's right. Woo! That's right. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Amen. We should never lose the other. That's right. Hallelujah. And I remember people coming to my house for me to pray for them. That the Lord would show me something. Amen. Oh, God, would you move on me here now? Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Because they wanted to be where somebody got a hold of the presence of God. That's right. But I wonder today how long it's been since somebody come to our house, your house or my house, simply to pray a while that God would show us something. Amen. Can I tell you, if we want to get to where God can't be hid in our life, then we've got to get right in the presence of the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm here to tell us, amen, we're having excuse after excuse after excuse. Well, I couldn't be at church for this, and I couldn't be at church for that. I'm going to tell you, I used to be a supervisor on the job. Mm -hmm. And, 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 uh, at, that, at one time, I had better than 40 men. And Brother Mitchell is a supervisor in the factory now. And uh, you probably run 20 or 30 there, don't you now? Maybe a little better. And, 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 and it's difficult if everybody don't show up. Right. You got a machine here that's, that, that, that you need to run. If that machine don't run, the people down the line can't get it. And you bring somebody in that don't know how to run it. And, and you put them on it and try to do the best you can with it. You don't get out to production for the day. Right. And, and, and so so people just making excuses. I can't be at work for this. Can't be at work for this. Can't be at work for this. Because Pauline knows about this too. So finally, the company has to make rules. And even the people who never have any problem with absenteeism yeah. suffer for some of those rules that they have to make because some people just can't get up and come to work. Right. Right. Now, I, I've got the best word for that for me. It's soreness. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and I had a fellow I had a fellow one time, he just kept on and I just can't do this. And I, I've got to take off. I've got to take off. I, my, 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 my family this and my family that. And I've got to take off for this and I've got to take off for that. Finally, I looked at him one day and I said, do you really need this job? Sure. But my family comes first. And I said, I'm going to tell you something. How long are you going to have a family if you don't have a job? I said, if you don't get up and come to work, but I'm not going to put up with this. Come on. Yeah. Amen. If the machine didn't run, the others couldn't work on down the line. Amen. And so finally, finally, he straightened up a little bit. And I went into him after I quit a long time back. And he said, you know, said, he said, I, I, I liked you back then. I gave you a lot of trouble. He said, but I still liked you. He said, you could have fired me several times and I wouldn't have had nothing. 
Hey, my money had no way to feed my family. I said, son, I'm just trying to get you to understand that if you don't have a job, what's a family to you? Right. Hey, Amen. What are you to your family right. if you can't keep them up? But a lot of people can't get their priorities straight. And the reason they can't get their priorities straight, that's the reason God can't move in their lives. Hey, Amen. God, would you help out talking about He cannot be hid. We've got to get our priorities straight. Right. Right. Amen. And I'm wondering sometimes, my Lord, I'm not trying to scorch us and skin us this morning. I'm wondering sometimes. I've watched a generation die. I've watched them die off. Yeah. Amen. And I've watched them as they died, Sister Pauline. You know. Oh, God. Your mother. My mother-in-law. She wouldn't. She didn't get up and give no big testimonies in church. She never, she never did. But the family knew she prayed. Family knew that God dealt with her. And some of the in-laws, when they would have problems in their home and in their families, they'd come to her. Yes. Amen. And, and, and tell her, I need for you to pray about this. And, and she would pray, and then she just she didn't say God said anything. She'd just say, I feel like everything's gonna be alright. And every time she said it, it was. That's right. Well, brother, when she passed on, oh, God. some of the family members said, who are we going to go to and pray for now? Right. Who are we going to go to? Well, Sister Pauline's still living. Sister Esther's still living. And I'm telling them, they got God. I, 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 I'm not just saying because this is my wife. I, I, I've got more confidence in her than I have anybody in the world. And I've got confidence in y'all. But I live with her. I know how she is. I know how, how her life is. And sometimes I laugh and make jokes about it, you know, about her being in charge and her bossing me around. Hey, Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you, if she said that I don't feel good about this, hey, Amen, then that tells me that she must have been praying about it. If she don't feel good about it, then I just simply don't want to get involved in it because it all every time I do, I get trouble out of it. Are you helping me preach? Hey, amen. But the family looked at it. And at the rest of the family, hey amen, because they hadn't dealt with some of us. We're older now, we're the oldest ones now, but at that time, you know, and and who's going to pray for us now? And I'm watching a, another generation get older. Who's going to take up the slack? Right. Right. Well, Christ cannot be hid right. in our lives. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God. He couldn't be hid. He couldn't even take a break. Hey, Amen. If somebody was knocking on his door, I need God to move for me. I need for you to pray for me. You know why he was like that? Because I, I, I believe as you mentioned, John said he's got to decrease. John had to decrease, and Christ must increase. Hey, Amen. When we get decreased and Christ increases, then we will be able, the people will be able to see God. In our lives. God. God. Amen. I know, I know that, that I could have got down here and, and got into some scripture and brought out a lot of things. And I got no problem with that. Right. I like preaching like that. And I like to preach like that when I feel like it. Right. Hey, amen. But right now, I don't feel like it. Right. I feel like talking to us to get to where Christ cannot be hid. In our lives. Oh, glory to God. You know, the preacher said something for Friday night that really stuck to me. Really stuck to me. He said several things, but one thing really stuck to me. And he's talking about people disqualified, getting disqualified from the ministry, you know. And somebody looking at him and said, well, he's done this and he's done this. He's disqualified himself from the ministry. And uh, he wasn't downplaying any of the rest of it when he mentioned several things. But he said, to, you know, what about our tempers? Right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Don't you think flying loose on both ends, mm -hmm. getting mad and just throwing a living fit? Right. He didn't say it that way, but that's what I thought of. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would disqualify us? Yes, it would. It'd keep Christ. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. They see us, 
They don't see Christ when they see That's me. Right. 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 Anybody right. help with me? That's right. I said, is anybody with me today? Come on. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. When I get like that, I get to get thinking about being preaching up a dry throat, thinking preaching for a couple of times. And, 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 and I guess it's just the size of the church and the size of the pulpit and where it sits on the platform. It seems like you're way out here and everybody's way back there. Amen. You think you're preaching to yourself sometime. Amen. And, and some brothers told me, and he said, you know, later, he said, did you feel like you was all the way out there by yourself? Now, I'm telling you, I was terrified. I was petrified. Amen. Can you help me here a few minutes? And, 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 but but, but I, I, I'm talking to us this morning about Christ cannot be hid in our lives. gift of tongues the gift of healing the gift of the discerning of the spirits and then several of the gifts goes on with nine of them it's mentioned in the bible Christ could not be hid in their lives oh I feel God getting on me now I'm not trying to, to criticize us and condemn us this morning because I'm not going to preach on you, amen, and, 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 and hurt you. And I won't preach on you at all if I think I know it. And that's kind of bad. But when I was younger, I would. Are you helping me preach here a few minutes? I, 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 I would just up and preach on it. But Christ being hid, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting to where Christ cannot be hid, in our life, that the presence of God is moving. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 he ought not be hid in our life because we are His witnesses. Right. We're that living example. We're that open letter to the world that Christ is living in our life. Now back to the job. Again, when I was working in the factory, now, Whenever I took a supervisor's job, uh, I didn't gain, I didn't have a lot of respect. Not because I didn't work, but some of them thought that I hadn't been there long enough, and somebody else ought to have it. It was smarter than me, and well, I got it because the Lord saw fit for me to have it, and I gained their respect. I earned their respect. Number one, anything that I ever put anybody, a job that I ever put anybody on, I'd done it first. We had some dirty jobs. We had a paint tank that the pit had to be cleaned out. And it was bad. And by the time I get in the supervisor position and several people got sick trying to clean that out, everybody always went into it with oxygen. I mean, they went into it with a big hose on them and got down in there with a mask on. I got down in there without a mask. And I spent four hours in there one night, wound up in the ER myself. Amen. And so I never put anybody doing anything that I hadn't done myself. So I earned their respect, you know, all along. But the man that was supervisor over me, he's the sorriest thing I ever seen. He wouldn't hit a lick. He wouldn't work. You couldn't get a whole day's work out of him. There wasn't a whole day's work in him. And he was smart. He was smart enough to get out of work. Are you helping me preach? When he took supervisor's position. He never earned their respect. <coughs> never. Nobody ever had any respect for him. They did what he said because he had the authority. But he wound up being my supervisor too. Whew. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and nobody, nobody respected him. Now I'm going to tell us, if we want to be respected, amen, then they, they've got to see Christ in us, Brother Raymond. They have to. They have to. People they may to. ride us. People may say things to hurt us and say things to hurt our feelings. Amen. But I'm telling you, when we pray for the sick and God begins to move, oh, hallelujah, and the Spirit begins to move in the church and we begin to move, Oh, glory to God. People can say what they want to. Christ cannot be here. No. Well. Cannot be. Glory to God. Maybe I'm just 
rebel this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. But let the sinner look at the believer oh, and see God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help us today. Now, help us today, Lord. Help us I'm working today. good. Help us today. There's been a time since I've been pastor here that I didn't work outside of what I did here. And working every day has its effect. Yes, it and does. I'm not trying to tell you I don't want to work because I really enjoy it. Right. But it has its effect. Yes, it does. I went to bed tired the other night and I dreamed that uh, uh, Sister Esther had somewhere to go after church on Sunday and I was already tired and she said we've got to be I believe it was in Harlan County at 4 o'clock to uh, a birthday party for a child and then we got to come back and be back at church by 6 and you know, in my dream, I'm already tired. <laughs> I went to bed tired. And I'm dreaming that, that I've got to hurry and put a whole lot of things. And finally, in my dream, I said, Honey, do you realize how long it's going to take to get from, you know, the party don't start to four. And then if you just stay for 30 minutes, we can't get back to church in an hour and a half from where we are, where we're going. And, and, and so I just don't think we're going to be able to make it. Boy, it's glad for rain the next day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody helping me preach. Amen. Uh, 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 you know, but, but we can let a lot of things in our lives pull us. Yes. Pull us. Are you helping me? Come on. Right. Amen. But we got to realize that God has us where we are right now for a reason. Right. Right. Yes. Yes, Lord. I missed my turn yesterday. Just ready to go to Lexington. And so we always get off at exit 104. And I guess I've just got in the habit of riding with Ricky and them, and we go past 104. And we was at 108, and I said, I missed my exit. And she said, Well, we've come a long way out of the way. Now, when I was younger, Things like that would irritate me. I can't believe I did this. But I said to myself, everything works for a reason. Right. Amen. The other day, whenever the Interstate 64 was shut down because of an accident, and Ricky decides he's going to go all the way around it, and we was a little better than two hours getting to work that morning. And we got out on the Winchester Road trying to bypass that, and lo and behold, we didn't run into another one. Amen. And, and, and you know, but everything, everything for a reason. What if we'd have got there on the job early, and somebody not been, not been uh, 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 up to par and about half asleep and got hurt? That'd have been worse than going all the way around. Everything happens for a reason. God's got you where you are for a reason, and He don't want us to to start letting a whole other thing distract us today and get us away from God. Amen. Get us to work. The people can't see God. That's right. I'm going to close real quick this morning. Here be God. Here be God. I don't have television. I haven't had for years. But I do have internet. Here be God. But it, 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 it's been a long time. But Tom worked on my computer <coughs> the other day. His house, and it's better. But it's old and it's slow. It's been a long time since I've just sit down on my computer and just start looking for things and looking up things. If I don't need it, I don't go to it. And I'm trying to discipline myself. I like to I like to read the news. And I'm trying to discipline myself with my phone. I don't just sit with it in my hand. I don't have Facebook anymore. I look at the pictures that people post on Instagram so Sometimes I post some of myself, but I try to try to discipline myself because I'm going to tell you something, church. I don't think we've got nobody here this morning doing nothing like this. The post that you put on something like that tells everybody what's in your heart. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Well, Amen. 
You're telling all of your readers, all the people that follow you, what's in your heart. That's right. And it's God. They need to see God. That's right. Whatever you do, whatever you're doing, they need to see God. That Christ cannot be hid in your life. That we've got discipline. 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 I was working on second shift at the factory, and I had a good job. Uh, in, in my department, five years as fast as the turnover wire there. I was the top man in the department. I had more seniority than anybody. So more seniority had the best job. I didn't I got a little dusty, but it didn't get dirty. And I made the most money of anybody in the department. I had the best job. But I got the whole department got shut down. The whole second shift got shut down. And we had to go to day shift. Five years seniority wasn't nothing to get 18, 19 years. I got the lowest job in the place. I mean, tell you, I, we had to, I'm trying to fold on on you this morning. I worked right next to an oven that baked the paint on the products. And it got up to 375 degrees. And they didn't have anything on either end of that place, of uh, 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 that, that oven, to take care of the smoke. And it got a 375 degrees, and they pushed that stuff in there wet, and you can imagine the smoke as they baked that paint on those. And they would open those doors and have to come rolling out of there. And in the summertime, it already over 100 degrees in that place. And me working on a job that I looked like I come out of a coal mine rather than a factory. The steel dust would be up in my nose where I breathed, and I'd just be covered with oil and dirt. And I was making about half of the money that I made. But I had a family. They had bills to pay. And I had to hustle. Now, don't you listen to me? I had to hustle to make $5 an hour. I had to hustle. $40 a day. Now people make $40 an hour. And I had to hustle to make $40 a day at a job that I hated. But you know what I did? I pulled myself in line. I mean, the heat and the dirt would cause me to break, my skin to break out. And I'd just prickle all over. I went to the doctor. I told him what my situation was. First thing he did, he get off his job. I said, Doc, that's not an option. There's no place else to go to right now. I got to work there. So Brother Raymond, he gave me something that I could put in my bath water. And I don't mind taking a shower, but I hate to take a bath. And I, I could put in my bath water and sit in that and put all over my skin to keep it from doing me so bad. And I disciplined discipline myself to work at a place that I didn't want to work. And can I tell you that that has affected me after I got into the ministry. There's a lot of things that I don't like, a lot of things that I don't like to be involved in, but because we have to, we discipline ourselves. When people don't discipline themselves, then you cannot see Christ in their life. You just simply see them. That's right. Yeah. Talking to us today. That's right. I'd like to really preach, but I'm just talking to us, I guess. Seeing Christ, where He cannot be hid. He couldn't even take a break. But somebody come needing a miracle. Somebody come needing God. Needing the move of God. And they came, and He didn't turn them away. They got what they came for. Right. If they had enough faith, and they that they got what they came for. I'm telling you today, God's talking to us that He don't let Him be healed. Let everybody see that it's God.
remember I'm trying to think. Somebody come get us a song this morning. I, I remember one time being put on a job and I knew how to do it. But the supervisor wanted it done a different way. So, Bill, it was hard to do it his way. I had the easiest way to do it. And I wound up doing it my way. But he wanted it done a certain way. It's okay, okay, okay. You know, it cost it me money because I was getting paid incentive. You know what incentive is? You get paid incentive. It cost me money to prove to him, and I worked hard. He stayed around. He saw I wasn't just goofing around. I worked hard. When I proved to him that my way was the best, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. And later, I became a supervisor. He come out. He said to me one day, he said, I need this done. And he said, I've got my plan formulated. But he said, smiled at me, and he said, you go ahead and do it your way first. Then if it don't work, I'll do it mine. I will do it mine. You know, you can gain people's confidence. You can gain their confidence. And once you've gained their confidence, whoo, hallelujah, they can see Christ in your life. Yes, that's right. Then we had a controversy come up. Oh, God, hip and him, Jesus, hip him. Anytime you have a controversy and it gets heated, once it gets that far, then both, people, both parties are wrong. Oh, precious God. Come on. I said once it gets heated, both parties are in the wrong. I don't care who started it. Once it gets heated, both parties are messing up. And it got heated. And I got transferred. From one job to the next, he left him there. And he looked at me. And he said, I'm still talking about Christ cannot be it. He looked at me and he said, 